So <clears throat> here's the one supposition. Uh, what, what we're given, uh, given a space curve, expressed as a vector function. It's not C1. It's a space curve C expresses a vector function R of T. Uh, then uh, we're going to say that the arc length uh, L uh, L well, we have a condition here that uh, we need to specify, but uh, actually so let, let's change it. Instead of n, let's write and suppose there you go. That's what I wanted to say. Suppose that the derivative uh, r prime, actually the individual function, let's do f of t, g of t, and uh, h of t, they are all uh, continuous. on some interval of t and uh, from a to b like so. So it's a closed interval of t from a to, to b. Then uh, the length of the curve of, uh, of c from T equals A to T equals B is given by, and here's the formula that Kyle gave us. Uh, the first formula will be simply the square root, and here we'll have um, F prime squared plus a G prime squared plus H prime squared, close the square root and dt, but since the uh, the integral, the square, the radical itself is the uh, the magnitude of the derivative vector function, then we can write it as the integral from a to b of the magnitude of the vector function, uh, like so. Okay, so we, we have these two expressions to work with. The, the second expression is, is particularly convenient. And can give you a much more uh, elaborate example than mine, so I can, I can skip the first example, and go and talk about parameterization. Um, and uh, give you an example. I think I included this in my notes, but I, for some reason, well, for, for good reason, I, I did not include it in, my, in the homework. So, but now I, I probably can can give you uh, can include that in the quiz that will follow the homework. So suppose that you have two vectors that express uh, present that describe the same curve, and it's quite possible. Um, and the, for for sake of discussion, let's say that one one uh, vector would be a function of t, and the other vector would be a function of s. In such that both of them uh, describe the same curves, as I said. So let's write a supposition here. So 
So this will be R1, and it's a vector function of t, and R2, which is a vector function. Well, I need to choose a different uh, letter than S. So, so I put S here. So uh, what comes before? Let's do U. R2 of U are the uh, are two vectors, two vectors, uh, two vector functions describing the same space curve C. <clears throat> so here's an example s such that R1 of T will be the vector T t squared and t cube and r2 of u will be the vector uh, instead of t we'll have e to the u instead of t squared we'll have e to the 2u and e to the 3u for replacing t cube so um, the relationship between the two vectors and if you want to, trans to, to transform from one vector to another, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? We, we can say that, uh, <clears throat> so let's see. So then the relation between R1 and R2 it's given by and here's the transformation uh, T equals E to the U and U equals natural log of T okay uh, one thing that I did not do and I'm, it's embarrassing not doing it is that I didn't mention the uh, the boundaries of T and U because every time you give the vector like if you describe a, a space curve in a parametric uh, using a parametric function okay uh, you need to say you need to give the boundaries of T okay so and in this case it's it's important we're going to let a T uh, so let me squeeze it here. Uh, T will go from 0 to 2. Okay. And this one, S, will go from 0, U, I mean. In my note, I have S. Uh, natural log, but I'm, I'm using S later on to natural log of T. Okay. So this will go right here. Sorry about the uh, the notes here. Um, I'll try to rewrite it before I post it on on website. Is it clear enough? Okay. So if this is one, and you can see, for instance, how uh, how uh, the transformation is working, so that after doing t declaring t equals e to the u and u the natural log of t you can see that uh, t equals 2 is expressed or is replaced by uh, u equals natural log of 2 okay we'll go back to it in a little bit Go ahead. Is, uh, 
it's open and both of them are closed. Okay. Thank you for pointing this out. Because it, it's closed on zero to two, so it has to be closed on. Plus, if we calculate the arc length, we include the boundaries on the integral. So it's, notice that I put here closed interval as well. So it's all, the, the interval is, is closed. Yeah. Again, I apologize for the messy uh, notes here. Uh, 